Hello and welcome back to the Not So Fit Couple podcast with your hosts, Lucy Halden and Benjamin Halden. With our 200th episode. Can we get some kind of... I can't hear what we're getting. Right. We're getting no, I can't. Oh God, do you have no headphones on? Uh, yeah, we're also sat somewhere well different today. We are sat in our lounge and I actually, I had a very rushed last minute physio appointment this morning. So I've come back home thinking, I'm going to start the podcast in like an hour. No. It was Lucy. You've got five minutes to eat four bagels to sit down. I well, don't even I, I have think my this laptop. Is the thing, to be fair, you you tell people a time, stick to it. I actually give. Motto. I actually give a time. Do you know what you used to be quite punctual? I am punctual. No, it's gone quite sloppy recently. Punctual. Yeah. Is in, I can speak properly. That's not what punctual means. <laughs> no. What does <is>, punctual <laughs> Carl, on time. Yeah. Oh, I'm always on time. Not anymore. Is in, I was 20 minutes early to my physio appointment. But late to our podcast. No. Late to our class on no, a Sunday. The actual, the reason I was a little bit later than I should have been is because I was 15 minutes extra time at the physio because... What about every Sunday when you're late to class and I have to leave in a different car? I don't know car? why that is actually on a Sunday. I do. I get up thinking I've got loads of time. Anyway, and then I don't. Anyway, 200th episode, big dick energy. Oof. Well done, everyone, for getting this far and making it this far. Mm. We're also going to be ringing someone on this episode this week as well and having a little chit-chat. So... Stay tuned for that. I don't know who it is, by the way. That's why I was looking at Ben like... Are you excited? I mean... Who do you think it could yeah, be? Yeah, we're not told, Luce, so... I thought it could be my mum. Mm. Could be. Because we love... We love the Debs on yeah, the podcast. we do love Debs, but yeah. So, I, yeah, I literally have... Um, <laughs> I don't even have my laptop with me today. That's how I feel. Now we're having a bit of a chit-chat. We are going to be speaking about running this episode as well. Uh, I think everyone's enjoyed the last couple of episodes and then following this app. We are going to be talking about Harrox Worlds because that is coming up this weekend. And so you'll probably know by the time this comes out that I've pulled out of Harrox Worlds, unfortunately. Bam, bam, bam. I'm actually, <laughs> actually quite good. So that sound effect is uh, just That's rubber the salt one in I the wounds. Thinking, yeah. But yeah, I've got potentially a stress fracture at the minimum, a micro tear in my slayers. So you win some, you lose some. It's just bad timing. Shit, because I feel the fittest that I've ever been. Worked super hard over the past couple of weeks and months. Been doing double days. But sometimes, like I say to a lot of... I was talking about this, a Solomon paradox the other day about taking your own advice. And I often speak to clients and members. Oh, here's our... Here's our guest. That shit me up because I thought it was a postmark. Who is it? <laughs> There she is. What the fuck? What are you doing? Here? <laughs> Welcome to the show, Megan Davis. We have a oh my god, that air, completely <laughs> threw me off. Take a seat. I get. I thought. Oh, yeah. I was literally just speaking to you this morning. Yeah. Did you bring? Have you bought your bag? <laughs> I knew I was seeing Meg later. Yeah. Are you Maggie's here all day? Um, well, no. I've got my. I've got yeah. an eyebrow. Appointment. I'll be here for as long as I can be. Where's so I'll sit Meg's mic? Oh my so god! For anyone who's, if anyone's listening, and not watching on YouTube, Meg's right. walked in, and Meg is our guest for this week's episode, which Lucy didn't know about. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> that is well exciting. I thought, I thought I Ben was gonna just like that. How have you on? I hold it like that. That's come on, strength for this. It is. Look at you! How oh, wait. That's really threw me off. Well, we I thought you were going to call Speaking about the Geneva Marathon that you two did anyway, so it, it's an ideal time to do it on the 200th episode. I can't believe you've done 200 episodes, you know. I know, I know 200 okay. episodes is a lot. I don't know how people survive this many episodes, to be honest. It's amazing. Stay for a coffee. I'll stay for a quick coffee. <laughs> this is well. Like, <laughs> ben was really rushing me because I was late back from physio. And he was like... I had to eat my bagel and I've just, my physio appointment was important. Did you think it was just going to be you two? Or did you know you had a guest? No. I thought, thought, we, I thought you were going to phone mum yeah. or something. <laughs> I guess mum. I was close. I've got a question for you though, for both of you. How long do you think it would take, because we are going to speak about running in the Geneva Marathon, how long do you think it would take to run to the moon? You die before you get yeah, there. you die. No, I'm not like talking like you No, 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 as in distance. out of years, I think you'd die before do you get there. Do you want to know there. how far it is? Yeah. 384,000k. Yeah, you die. Well, how, how much is, why would you die? 
an 84. Could you run that in a lifetime? Is that what you're saying? Thousand. Yeah, I don't no, like what's Russ, what's Russ just done? Three. When he did the length of Africa? That's how you know. I don't know. I don't think I don't. Google. I don't think it was that far. Was it not? He was doing uh, over three, a marathon every day for a year. Three hundred eighty-four thousand. That's got three zeros. Russ ran eight thousand kilometers. Eight thousand. Oh. Eight thousand. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, then I you're think, way off. You die. Bloody hell. No. I, 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 as in, I think even amount of that it would take. I think almost a lifetime to run that, wouldn't it? So he's done a year in 8,000. Come on, let's do the math. So you'd have he's to run... It. You'd have to, I'm here, don't you worry. He, um, you'd have to run 1,000 kilometres a day if you did it in a year. So that means 10 yeah, years. Yeah, if you did 100k yeah. a day for 10 years. So 50k a day for 20 years. That's or 25k a day for... 40 years. Yeah. It's it's giving it's giving lifetime. Yeah. 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 And it's giving lifetime and it's giving, it's giving lifetime injuries. <laughs> Death through injury. Be my downfall day I was more so thinking if you are running to the moon though, you'd it's one impossible and two, you'd <laughs> yeah. die on your way out of the atmosphere. No, yeah, well, without crazy. without the without the Oh, I was thinking real. I the, was thinking yeah. stewing straight up to the moon there. You were thinking distant. <laughs> I was thinking um straight out the atmosphere. What's it? The your the crow? The crow? As <laughs> well, far as the the crow, the crow flies. Show flies. You <laughs> yeah. were thinking crow flies, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. But for those I'm who really shocked. Those who didn't know, <laughs> Meg and Lucy did the Geneva Marathon. What was it? Two or three weeks ago. I think it was like it was three, like three, three weeks, weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so Meg got an absolute whopping time. Yes. What did we hear? We got three hours twenty-four minutes. And do you know what? I keep saying 40 seconds, but it was actually 38. So every just second Just skip a second counts. off. We just go to the nearest minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. yeah no, three, yeah, 324, one. 38, because I was 324, 40. 30, 39 or 40, because I pushed it. <laughs> if you would have run in front, that would have been the snidest I know, can you imagine? Ever. That was me, a probably no, Lucy thing. That there's a video and I just put, <laughs> my, I, I put yeah. my hand behind her. I'm like, go. I was, it was a really, like really rough. Russ finished, Mate, I was just about to say, did you see that? No. Yeah. Russ Cook finished ah, running the length of Africa and then someone ran beat him to the finish line. <laughs> ran, I mean, ran the last 100 metres. So all the media them. images, this guy's in front of him. I mean, That's, you'd just get a photo shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. AI. AI him out of that immediately. Why would you do that? Really? That's actually awesome. really weird behavior. He wasn't raised right, is my opinion. You, know? <laughs> yeah. you can't. That's really making it about yourself yeah, there. Yeah. Before we dive into some of the marathon questions, though, we've got um, a debate that we need to settle. What is okay. the biggest animal that you could take down? The biggest animal yeah. that I could take down? Like, so you're in a, imagine like a gladiator arena, but you've got no weapons and you've got to fight an animal. And then we'll tell you what we said the biggest animals were. Okay. Well, well, I'd like to make a disclaimer that I'm a vegetarian, so we'd never take down <laughs> any animal. It's okay, I don't I'm think I would I'm thinking small scale. I'm Apart thinking, from the, the odd pigs in blankets. I think I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I think I can guess what you're going to say. Wait. Um, that I could, like, physically fight yeah. head and to kill. head like, yeah. and kill like with no match. take out. Oh, God. Um, oh, God, it's small. Whatever it is. Uh... I know what you're going to say. Tina. No. Oh. <gasps> no. Tina the queen. No, is, I'm having a real battle in my head of like actually Tina's picturing dog, myself, like having to rip limbs off animals. And no, I'm it's not really rip limbs. I think break neck. Oh God. <laughs> um, Why is that so funny? That's how you do it. I think a hair. Ooh. Oh, okay, Megan. I was going to say if you were chicken, potentially. I was thinking chicken. <laughs> I was thinking chicken. I've got I images of Meg running around chicken and chicken like Rocky no, Balboa. No, that was a real system. I thought she was going to say chicken. I was actually thinking chicken, but then I th- actually thought the beak would throw me off. So mm. I went so I went <laughs> fluffier. Yeah, you could just break I went, fl- I went fluffier and I thought rabbit. And then I thought, no, you can do better than a rabbit. So I went hair. <laughs> That's really So not. I went one up. Girl. That was my thought do you, process. Do you, do you want to know what Lucy's was? What? An anteater. That would be hard to take down. Big. No, they're well, they're big, so I've got big points. They're slow as fuck. We've got a massive neck, so you I just don't think go. You could take that down. Your back could snap its neck. It's okay. What did Ben say though? Ben said Ben's that he could take a... down a cow. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so it was a bit. I was being optimistic at the time. Yeah, optimistic sums it up. So a thing, we uh, we actually got a, yeah, but a to listener. Take down. Oh yeah. So a listener got in touch with us yeah. uh, and said. 
well, she sent us a voice note, so I'm just going to play this very quickly, and then I'll show you the aftermath of what happened when she decided to fight a cow. No. No, she didn't. Why would she fight a cow? Yeah, that's, that's a terrible. really stupid... Hello. So I was chuckling at Ben's comment about the cow because yeah. last September I got headbutted by a cow this twice for you. whilst I walk on a public footpath in a field. Um, yeah, and it basically dipped its head and hit me twice oh. and I got the most horrendous black eye. Um, I've sent you the photos. It just immediately blew up and... Yeah, then I somehow managed to grab the dog and run back through two fields to get to the safety of the road before I got taken to hospital. Um, okay, so that was Catherine, and I'm just going to show you guys. And what the, were her injuries? Yeah, I'll show you now. So this is the immediate <gasps> aftermath. No! Yeah. No! She ben, was, you couldn't... <gasps> yeah. <gasps> How awful we'll is that? On screen, by we'll the way. On oh my god, I'm so YouTube sorry for that. That whatever happened, that is yeah. awful. Split her eye, everything. Oh my god. Does she end up with a fractured skull? Yeah, it's something like that. I'll, I'll get the full and details. Do you think you could I've take got that head down. like a fucking armadillo. Though, so. <laughs> You'd never take down a cow. I think I actually win the debate with my I, but auntie. No, but then I change mine to a pig. Pig still. I would bully a pig everywhere. You can just imagine the little pig running away. Like <laughs> no, I also think a pig would be hard to take down because quicker than you think. Yeah. You'd be. It'd be rather. I think I've won. I'm not going to lie. Everyone can comment and they can obviously say, I, I think. Uh, no, excuse me. I could 100% take down a hair, so I think yeah. I win. What was yours, Carl? Yeah, but yours is tiny, Meg. Hairs on. Sorry. I don't think I could take I'm taking down no that. Chance. We'll Google a hair. Okay, one more. Oh, I look at him. One Go more on. question before we get into the running questions. Do you think insects sleep? Yes. Yes. Do you? Every Every animal has to sleep. You don't Is last more than five sleep. days without sleep. I don't think jellyfish sleep. Uh, oh yeah, jellyfish just exist. They probably just... They're, well, they're because water, jellyfish are 99% plant. That okay. is definitely not true, Where everybody. Just so everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely not true. Or maybe that not plant, or they're 99% water. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so are we. You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I did do it as a zoology degree. Yeah, I think everything... Definitely not true. Insects sleep, right? Insects definitely sleep. Yeah. Okay. Let's move into that all race now. We've got away Wait, from beating can, up Can animals. I ask a quick question? Do you think there are more legs or eyes in the world? Legs. Why? Because spiders have eight legs. Oh, uh, yeah. But they also have about, what about spiders? Have, eyes. Yeah, they have about 100 eyes, no? Yeah. Yeah, but like... What about fish? They haven't got any uh, legs. Yeah. A lot of eyes. What about table legs? What about Stevie Wonder there? See? More legs or eyes? What are you saying, Meg? That wasn't funny, Ben. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> also he would still he still has eyes um oh God, i think there's a lot of ants though right they've all got six legs yeah i think two i'm going eyes. legs what has got more than two eyes i'm going legs spiders. Spider. yeah spiders. but then fish centipedes centipedes fish have got no legs and they've all got two, oh, two eyes centipedes have about a thousand legs a centipede and a millipede well legs. centipede have a hundred right centipede yes go yes, millipede you know <laughs> I think legs. Do you know the legs, answer? Yeah. No, God, no. I don't think there's anyone oh, counting them. Okay. Wait, I think legs. Yeah, what I think legs. It? I think legs, yeah. Mm, fair enough. Can't tell the answer of what's in a jellyfish either, by the way. Well, let's leave the jellyfish in the hands. <laughs> and by the way, just like we aren't into animal cruelty, by the way. We're I know, just, this is this, this is, is really started off as a road. Speaking. Uh, I didn't, not so apologies to those that. who have uh, been offended and we're not going to come around and beat your pets up. But no. hard, hardest part of the Geneva Marathon, if you can reflect on it, which was the, the most difficult part? Um, the training. The training. I did not think you were going to say that. I didn't. But I'm actually glad that you did say it because yeah. I was actually speaking about this yesterday about the amount of people that are signing up for events or races and then just turning up and doing them and not I training for I literally had this conversation with a client yesterday. So I literally had the same conversation. Um, the training... The trainings was pretty brutal, actually, mm. and not just physically, like and men like mentally and emotionally. I think I struggled more than I thought I would, but I think my training block and the amount of effort I put into the training was the reason that I actually found the marathon not easy. Mm. Like it was, it but was hard, like that, but you? it it felt really manageable. And I actually enjoyed it. And I think that is probably a testament to how horrendous some of the training was, I would say. Yeah, you did some of the runs here as well. And you did some yeah. long, long yeah. runs in shitty weather and stuff. And I think on that point that we were speaking about then, 
you like you learn so much more from that 12 weeks than you do just that day going and doing it oh my god and which so is it's, it's the point that people miss from those events and like just people who sign up for events all the time not doing anything i don't think you learn anything from it apart from it's not the same but it's like you know when someone wins a lottery or someone gets given something or gifted something it's like you get to have it and get the medal but you've not worked at all yeah to achieve it and i think it's that process of earning anything that really teaches you a lot about discipline hard work consistency accountability yeah go on and it's all relative to the person it's not about what time you'd hit at the end but if you've not trained hard for something that you know that in yourself you know you've not put in the effort and you're just going to doss it i think the testament the is vocab, dos. is it yeah i've not heard that one before dos well here we are um, I think it's a testament to yourself when you do put the work in and you've got something to show for it because I wouldn't really want to just go through like a 16 week or a 12 week block of training and just do it half arse. But to be fair, if you're just signing up to stuff to sign up for stuff, you wouldn't even do that amount of work. No, would no you? that's what I mean. Mm, yeah. But I, I, I think I felt some of the Manchester High Rocks, like I just feel really shit standing on a start line and knowing that like I'm not confident. Unprepared. Yeah. It's the worst feeling. Yeah. You want to feel like you've at least done everything you possibly can to that point to give yourself the best chance to come out with the best result. Like if you're standing behind that line and there's doubt in there that you haven't really done everything you should have done, then you're probably not going to have the best Mm -hmm. race ever. Mm -hmm. You want to go in feeling full confidence. (laughs) Yeah. There's a video that I was taking. I was really, I was in my element at the start of Geneva Marathon. I was nervous. I was, I was really <laughs> nervous. I was like, <laughs> they were really like putting on some great songs and there's just loads of videos of me we could put on the screen. I'm just like singing away. Meg started singing away, but there's a guy behind who just looks <laughs> like... Like, like, his world's like, gonna end. like his world's about to end. I, I was still only singing though because you were singing and <laughs> I felt like I had to because you were filming because I would have been stood like that guy behind. So I'm like, this, like <laughs> I think it's helpful to not feel Anything yeah. to as it, nervous. Yeah. Did, did uh, well, how much, that's what I was going to ask, how much did Lucy piss you off? Because there's no chance she went through 42 <laughs> K with Lucy and like <laughs> Lucy Goggins over here not being annoying with the motivational quotes. Oh, no, honestly, there was, <laughs> I don't know what came over her and I don't think it was, spe- it was it like 30K though. It was, I mean, so we've already spent a lot of time together yeah. and there's already like, uh, but including like the last 20 years as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But also the last, we were also flew out to Geneva on the Thursday. So yeah. we had Thursday, so we Friday, Saturday. There was a lot of time spent together, but there was just that. And I know, and the thing was, I think from like the 30K mark to the end, I didn't really speak to Lucy in, until we crossed that yeah. finish line. And I think even when we crossed the finish line, I was still thinking like, I cannot even look you in the eye because you've annoyed me so much. <laughs> but I don't know. And it, it, it took me till we like sat down and we had a moment. And then I had to say to Lucy, I was like, you were so annoying <laughs> during that like last bit. But what she kept doing was, and you've never done this before. And I kept thinking I was running in silence. And I also thought, don't snap and don't say anything because like, I'm obviously so grateful that you were <laughs> running it with me and like, so thankful. So don't be, don't be a bitch and like shout at Lucy. But I was honestly, I was about this close. She turned into this like American. <laughs> I knew this was going to come. Yeah. Like this weird American motivator. Like the gels weren't called gels anymore. The gels were rocket fuel, which <laughs> made no sense. She kept going, okay, we've got a gel. We've got a gel in 10 minutes. And you know what that's going to be? Rocket fuel. And I was like, <sighs> and I was literally just thinking in my head, say rocket fuel one more time. And as I'm taking my gel, the 10 minutes later, she's like, that's rocket fuel. <laughs> That is rocket fuel. And I'm just like, oh, and I'm literally just like, oh my God. Do you know I, I what can't. though? And the other, what was the- Crushing we were, it. Oh, oh, we, oh, she was crushing it. We were, we were crushing it. We were killing it. We were all these things. And I just kept like one foot in front of the other thinking, I can't even look at her <laughs> and, and, and even say, shh, like, shh, yeah. like, shh, don't say it no. one more time. Well. When you're on a run with someone and they stop speaking, you, you admitted you, at the end that you were being annoying. I was so annoying. <laughs> I annoyed myself. Yeah. No, 
You, so you get to a stage. So I've been on Meg's side where you really like. Well, when, I did it in Lanzarote. Oh, we've all yeah, and I was like piss off. Cow and bears like piss off. Was, I was so yeah. it was. And I it, just, and it just I just ran in silence you. without even. But, the, but this was a situation. Meg stopped speaking from thirty k because she's hit the pain <laughs> cave. Jake's then found us and he's cycling next to me and I'm looking at Jake thinking. <laughs> <laughs> don't say anything but i just kept talking at meg it was almost like I she didn't like stop vomit, yeah she didn't stop i had word vomit she was like filling the silence yeah. but there was no need to fill the silence like we could have just ran in <laughs> silence for the last 10k and i probably would have been really quite happy inside mm. but god yeah but then when we hit 5k i think i was actually quite valuable with 5k to go it's like hey, it's five one thousand meters valuable. It's four 1,000 meters. Yeah. It's three 1,000 meters. You know what I really appreciated, appreciated in terms of like having you next to me when you were giving me like the facts? Because mm. I kept, because the last 5K, I all I said, to, I think the one thing from like 10K to the finish, the only thing I said to Lucy was, just keep me on pace. Yeah. It's the only thing I said to her. I went, just, I don't care. Just keep me on pace. Make sure I get my time. And then I probably shut up then for like the next 5K. So like the actual, um, like, nuggets of real information when you were like okay we're running at this pace and we've got a thousand meters to go and then but then the last thousand meters you're like well my garmin says we're finished <laughs> yeah my god i was like off well early. we're not at the finish line so <laughs> where are we i've got a video of meg when she was really struggling oh my god. Oh, this and is what i was gonna refer to at yeah. the road it was maybe as Were you giving tiny... a speech at this point again as well, or were you just asking questions? No, oh, I'm going, you're crushing it, yeah, uh, continuously yeah. for this we, whole video. Have we got video. this I think we popped it up before, haven't we? Um, and basically, <laughs> there was this, it was flat as fuck, honestly. You ran down in Geneva, then it was flat the whole way for the finish. There was a slight slant on the road. No, as in slant, as in, no, 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 no. As in, like, the as road's in, a bit like this. Yeah, so it was like one foot was, like, further down than the other. But, but it was basically flat. Okay. So okay. I... That's up for debate. There's a video and Meg just goes, I don't like this slant. <laughs> and then, no, and then it's I not just like that. Up. The reason that my voice is like that is because I'm so out of breath and so tired. And it's like, I've been running for 42K. There's probably 200 metres left. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want my last 200 metres to be on this slant. <laughs> mm. And like, I don't want to be running like it, this. It was, it was hard that because I really, really made Meg speed up quite considerably. <sighs> yeah, you did. Um, for the last 500 metres because I could see the clock and the clock says something else than what the time we were going to hit. So I got confused because the Garmin was off. For what I, the main clock, it, it wasn't, it obviously wasn't when we first started. So I made Meg, that's why she nearly falls over at the end. Cause I was like, fucking, sp like, you need to sprint. I think I went blind she towards went blind. the end. I was, <laughs> was like, awful. I don't even know what's it's happening anymore. Out. Yeah. Yeah. What was the heat like for that one? Fine. It's oh, absolutely it was, fine. It was actually, Rained, yeah, it? like not like rain, rain, like spitting at the start, which actually felt quite pleasant. Nice. Yeah, it was just like a little bit of a, and that didn't stop probably until maybe 10K in. Yeah. And then it kind of cleared up. And then it was only probably the last 10K that the sun was fully out. And that's when you're kind of like running down properly to the lake. That's where all, the lake, sorry. And then all the crowds are there. And even though I was like, it's obviously the worst bit, but it kind of, it started to get warm, but you could kind of push through because yeah. everything else was kind of happening around you. And you'd rather finish in the sun than yeah, rain. So even if you are a bit hot, it's The only it's thing fine. I will say that was really mad about Geneva, the first 10K, because you literally go off like into the, the valley. It So you, you kind of shuttled onto these tiny paths. Yeah. And because it was raining, it became like a fell race. Mm -hmm. And we really? were covered in mud yeah you couldn't we were all bunched together you couldn't get around people because it was just grass and like flooded on either side so meg was really stressed about hitting the pace and because we were stressed. just a bit behind it because we honest to we god couldn't you couldn't get, get round couldn't group, get through the, the issue i think that we had is that we were so near a pacer yeah so they all just bunch around yeah, yeah. paces don't they and i think we couldn't to stay on what my coach had kind of set we couldn't run quick enough to kind of overtake the pacer to be like away from it at that point. But we also were then, cause we were like stuck in this crowd. We were also like then a bit behind pace. Mm. So it was this weird, this weird bit, but then we got around him, didn't we? We yeah. just thought the best thing to do is just get around him and just go leave, leave the 3.30 pacer and go. Mm -hmm. and go. The only thing I think about when I think I fell running is your dad. Yeah. Yeah, we What's were. All those, what are those shoes called that he always talks about for fell running? 
Um, Brooks or no, not Brooks? No, they're not Brooks. Oh my God. They were a very particular, just a fell shoe. No, no, no. It's got a certain the brand. Blue and the yellow one. Blue and the, the, the yellow. Um, couldn't tell you off the top of my head. That's going to really annoy me. Walsh's. 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 Some, some old listeners will probably could've, know Could have done with some Walsh's, Walsh's for that are. first, that oh, first 10K of the marathon just felt really. Oh, I'm so glad I got that. Hold on me. Point to me. Yeah, point to Meg's. Point, <laughs> um, point to my brain. But yeah, the first ten k of the race was real. God, we could not find our groove for the whole thing. And I'm thinking, I was, I obviously couldn't have a moment of negativity. But I was thinking, no. fucking hell, this is shit. Like, obviously, just in my head, not voicing. I was like, this is stunning. <laughs> I was like, oh, because Meg, I could Meg was panicking so much, and I thought, fucking hell, wait, this is. Wait, wait, I wasn't panicking so much. It was a little bit of panic. Was not a lot, actually. It was small panic. It was a small panic. I think you were definitely. I could tell you were more internally panicking than I was mm. at that start bit. I had pressure to keep on pace. <laughs> I was like, we're not on pace. <laughs> that did really help you taking away all my... Everything. Guessing. Yeah, the, me not even having to kind of like look at my watch even was a real mm. like godsend. Like all I had to do was like one foot in front of the other until the finish line, which was really handy. Um, yeah, from a yeah. psychological perspective, it's probably yeah. easier. Yeah. On that as well, do you want to take a toilet break? I would love Go to take now. a toilet break. I Meg, did one the whole way here. I, w- I wasn't like predicting it in her face. Meg did say, can you go to the toilet? What do you um, do with this? Just leave it there. We'll carry on chatting. Okay. Um, yeah, speak, speaking of... Uh, speaking of your dad. <laughs> speaking of your dad. Your mum and dad are going to be at the High Rocks Worlds. Yeah, they are. They're working their way to Nice as we speak in their van. Yeah. I think they've actually... So they'll drop down into the centre of Nice. They're currently right up on top of one of the hills <laughs> in Nice, just sat there in Parker. the van. Yeah, because they're we, parked, they're waiting for us. conversation in the family group chat because, well, basically, obviously, because I keep getting injured from running at the moment, I don't think I've put a block of three weeks together without getting injured. I'm going to, I think, try and do a bike race this summer. And He's Lucy's a cyclist. And Clive is right on it. Yeah. He loves it. So there's going to be some interesting convos of that. But I did my first Swift race yesterday as well, which was okay. I think there was like 50 people in the race. I finished six. But there was also someone in the race. So some guy popped up on the Swift chat and said, why has this guy got a red tick next to his name? And someone else said, it's usually someone famous or a celebrity. And I looked at the name and it said Ben Foster. I was like, can't be the goalkeeper Ben Foster, the Premier League goalkeeper. Premier League of what club though? He used to play for, he played for a couple of clubs and then he played for Wrexham recently. And he's, ah. and he's got England caps as well. Anyway, it was Ben Foster and he popped up and goes, basically, there's no point in any of you boys competing in this race because I'm just going to smoke everyone by the end. And he finished two seconds ahead of me. So if we put this out as a clip, Ben Foster needs to jump back into the race because I will smoke you. And also, I, I well, to be fair, Ben Foster is a very, very quick guy and very thick guy. I think someone like Ben Foster should have a go at High Rocks. I knew it was him because he's got a podcast called CGK. So it popped up on the screen. So if we put this clip out and he sees it, Ben jumped back into another race. It was my yes. first one. And also, we are challenging you to try High Rocks because I know he's a fit guy and he loves cycling, but I think he should give it a go. Yeah, the reason we got on this topic, on the way back from Hybrid on Sunday, I called mum and dad. I was on the phone for an hour because I said, oh, Ben's going to try cycling. Yeah, it landed right in there. <laughs> the yeah. rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, good, nice. But I think the, the thing I can't wait to see... Going on some rides with Dad. <laughs> the thing I can't wait to see Harold Denise is when you two get onto the sled pull and he brings up the Clive <laughs> Lurch. The, the Davis the Lurch. Da- the Lurch, the Clive Lurch. He's going to be giving it that Lurch. Do you know what? It's actually a technique that it's a lot good. of people I do. It it's fantastic. Week, yeah, yeah. Um, it's too heavy for us to do that. Yeah. Well, so my pot, my we double pot with all Billy, my. Billy does the lurch as well. Yeah, the lurch, the lurch. Are we thinking of the lurch whilst <laughs> almost falling over and crying <laughs> about how heavy it is? Yeah, I'm sure there'll be a lot of commentary from Deb Deb Davis as well going on. Oh yeah. yeah. But there's going to be a full YouTube video of that as well, so you'll be able to see it when it goes up on. How exciting! On Lucy's channel. Um, but with that as well, how are you feeling? For Hyrox, now that you've done a full marathon block, do you feel more confident, less confident? Like, because I think you'll be, you'll feel way, <laughs> I think you'll feel way better going into it, especially for the running bit now that you've, you've got that array with base under your belt. Yeah. The, the thing is, it's weird. Like, I feel, I feel fit and I feel probably the, maybe 
on par with the fittest I've ever felt. But I definitely think in January, I was more high rocks fit than yeah. I am right now. Um, and the only thing that kind of, like, don't get me wrong, I think the running is going to feel 10 times Please. better than it did in Manchester, which is great because the running was still pretty strong mm. there. So I think that is going to be fine. The only thing which would have been nice to have a little bit more time between the marathon and high rocks would be to do some high rocks specific um, station work only because it's heavier. Yeah. I think if it was the same open weight and it wasn't pro, I think I'd be feeling fine. My running feels good. I already know my stations are that they're good. fine. Yeah. But it's just because it is that heavier weight. It's just those sleds and it's the lunges and the wall ball. Like even I think though, by that time you'll be all right though. Like I think it's just the sleds, which is the difficult one to just get past. Yeah. You've got to, I think you've got to break them down. And when I've been doing the heavier sleds, obviously I'm not doing it now, but I was just trying to like never let myself get past like a seven out of 10, like RP or pain because I know I'm never coming back from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. It, we know we can move that sled yeah, between. Yeah, I, I can pick it up. So I'm losing oh, new God, technique. Oh sorry, fucking that... she-man. No. <laughs> but <laughs> isn't I'll just, it? I'll just carry it down the no, track. Don't worry, mate. No, but is in. We got a new technique on Sunday. Yeah, and thanks then, to Fran Calvert. Yeah, she Fran showed, showed us. us how to pick it up. You fly with that sled. You're not yeah. allowed to do that though. Don't care, Ben. So when, doing it. I think when me, <laughs> me and Bill Fran was, doing was it. it, I think you got told off for doing it. Okay, when I say yeah. we're not picking up as much as the boys do, because it's just I a physically, slight lift. I physically can't. And I so. so the only thing, like push. again, is I think they're going to be super strict with stuff at Worlds. You know, like some other events, especially the European mm. ones. You get away with certain things. I don't think you'll get away with as much. I don't think they were that strict in Manchester at Worlds, from what we, I can remember. We kept oh in Worlds. In at Worlds. Worlds, I don't think they were. The, so the only thing is, mm. and I think there will be quite a few eyes on our heat. We are eight AM first heat. Yeah, people That's will just there. be on it. Like yeah, the judges will be That's ready, us, ready to judge. Way. Yeah, I know. I'm actually buzzing. I'm about buzzing that. about that. What? We're first wave, yeah, first wave, eight AM, and then Fran and Lauren eight oh five. No, the eight fifty. Oh, completely was in the finish. Think, I think they've done it in age group. I think they've done sixteen to twenty nine. <sighs> all us sixteen to twenty nine year olds will go, and then the th I, well, I'm guessing. I'm actually guessing. Or, or, it's, based, know two or it's based off time because they're going off a Dublin qualifier. Yeah, but I think the time was like one oh one sixty six for Dublin. I think it's ba I might be based off time. Which, imagine me and Megan, that first heat. <laughs> it's good because you're not going to have too many people in your way. But you know what's <sighs> interesting on that as well is do, doing like the running block. Obviously, it's super helpful and you've already got the high rocks experience. It's interesting because a lot of people say, well, if you're a good runner going to high rocks, you'll do really well. The thing that was interesting watching the NYC event, which looks sick, by the way. Yeah, like so good. Yeah. So cool. Really There's cool. A lot, I knew a lot of people were doing that and it seems to be getting more popular in America. So I think this year it's really going to rock it. But I know a couple of really good runners like Matt Choi. He's got like a three hour marathon mm. and a couple of other people who took way longer than they thought they were going to take just because yeah. running on fatigued legs is way different to running on fresh legs. So I think, yeah, having that advantage of being a good runner going into high rocks is great, but you've got to be used to running to fatigue, which is why I think obviously Lance Armstrong did really well. Yeah. Because... He just batters his legs for like the last 40 years, mm. hasn't he? So he's done everything under fatigue because I think he won his age group. Yeah, yeah he, and he did. Got, he got asked on a, on a question on an interview, like, are you going to do well? And he's like, probably not. And they're like, are you not? And like, oh, I don't know. Who knows? Well, I might turn off who, like, so yeah. he could be there as well, which would be cool. I yeah. think one of the benefits of marathon running. Imagine your mum and dad if he's there. Oh, oh my God. It will go off. Like, imagine hey. Deb. <laughs> 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 She won't know what to do. <laughs> do you know what? She'll yeah. freak out. She'll freak out completely. He's at least that weekend as well. Is he? Yeah. Oh, he'll 100% be down to watch a Because his son is, like, lives in that area, apparently, so oh, he's no there way. anyway. So that's why he said, oh, I might do it. Oh, yeah, he'll be... Oh, yeah. We'll know because Dad's going to be Eyes getting a pick with him. Eyes out everyone. Um, I think marathon training, anyway, from my perspective, has been really beneficial for high rocks because your just general fitness increases yeah. so much. Yeah. As in, we can, like, sustain a higher level of fatigue and your heart rate will drop quicker because you're fitter. I was just fitter. to say about the heart rate, your heart rate stays considerably lower yeah. if you're more efficient at running. And, and it comes down quicker. Yeah, if you can basically run pretty quick and also your heart, heart rate, rate is coming down off like the ski or the rower, for example, 
You're on to a winner, really. Mm. It's what's what's harder, doing a marathon or doing a high rocks? A high rocks, 100%. But again, I think testament to my training. Yeah. I think I think that... Um, I don't know. I Well, I don't... Well, I, I had a bad time at Manchester High Rocks. Yeah, so. it's a, let's talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> should we? <laughs> should we? We spoke about it before. Um, but, that, but then I'm saying that the marathon was easier and it was a testament to my training. I really put the work in for Manchester High Rocks though. So again, the fact that I was having a near-death experience mm. after it was, again, that just kind of counteracts everything i've I just suppose it depends said. on your experience like if you if you'd had a really shit mar- marathon i've been really yeah. hard you could have been like oh well that was harder yeah yeah i think it's relative because i still think about chester every single day yeah. <laughs> of how hard yeah that is very of true. how hard it was nothing will ever be as hard as that but, but i will never put myself in that position again do you know what is a different gravy as well doing solo high rocks yeah i was humble doing that yeah i'm scared about we're that. we're all doing it it's fucking well harder to be fair like we've all committed though we've said it to each we'll other do it together we'll all do it together we'll do it in one of the european ones like we're not gonna, i'm not gonna say which one we're all gonna do it at the end of the year because then if you all do it together you all experience it and you least, did it on your own <laughs> yeah, yeah at least if you're all running around the track together even if we're not in the same heats we're gonna be like <laughs> how's it going <laughs> And just kind of be in it together, but not together. But I'm excited about it. And when you do it, though, and you go back to doing doubles, it's like, because I was going to do go back to doing doubles off this event, it makes you way more confident because you're like, I can do it on my own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it is yeah, a different yeah, yeah. race because you, you go way slower. Yeah, it's a paced slower. event yeah, rather yeah. than... I guess, it, I guess in that way, it's more similar to a marathon. Yeah, yeah. Or something like that. Slower, longer work. I, I think like probably a half marathon's training it's best suited to high rocks yeah that's 90 minutes people, of hard work i think people say that your high rocks k splits should be similar to your half marathon yeah. splits something like that it should be close i don't know if i could do that you know what i always think that like how i know to be fair maybe like a 405 yeah, which which Maybe. probably without me holding you back slightly on the runs you could probably run at high rocks so if I was basing it off half marathon, that, that's what I'm not it would saying be. exact, give or take. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's more so for doubles. Yeah, so yeah. I which think, makes yeah. a lot of sense. I think that's like meant to be kind of where your running's at. So that's why I think a lot of people say that like training for a half as well as high rocks is actually really good because mm-hmm. the running is really transferable. That pace yeah. is really transferable yeah. over to your high rocks. Um yeah, I wouldn't actually recommend it, training for a marathon and high rocks at the same time. I think it's too it's too much volume of running. It's a lot My of high rocks has definitely taken a hit from the amount of volume that I've been doing on the running, I would say. Well, I was seeing, like, my the physio I see said, and, and sorry, someone else we saw last week said, like, every third patient or person I see now is doing high rocks. Yeah. So, like, physios must be lapping up because yeah. the amount of injuries are coming from it because it's, it's so new. It's so different. It's so yeah. high intense, and you run under fatigue, which is the time you get the most injuries. Yeah, yeah, I'm concerned. A lot of people are that. going into high rocks as well and not realizing that it is a running event. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people are training for it, not realizing that all these extra little runs they're doing within their weekly split actually you've really increased your volume from probably really, nothing because yeah. a lot of people that are going into high rocks as well are gym based. They might not have really a running background and then they're suddenly thrown mm-hmm. into this pool where they're like, oh, yeah, I'm doing interval runs now and I'm doing an yeah. easy run and I'm doing a compromised high rocks based session, which has got running within it. And then they're like, oh, my God, my calves, my this, my that. And they're like, but I'm not doing that much running. But it's like, Whoa. actually, you've gone yeah. from practically probably zero to very minimal to actually quite a predominantly yeah, running based weekly gonna split. I'm going to be having painkillers before my what, <laughs> race okay, on Sunday. You, Me too. I'll ask. Where, where are you in pain? Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. Pain no, no mine's a genuine. You, what is your predicted time that you think you'll get for the weekend at High Rocks Worlds uh, doing pro weights? Because you've done it before, haven't you, as well? Yeah. Do you know Do you know what? We did 66. We did, but. That was awful. No, but oh. I think. <laughs> I don't know why awful. I've got this in my head. I, I know what you're thinking. It's mad. A 101? Yeah. 
I think but that one last year, may I add? I think that's 61 won. No, I know, but I think, I think that's doable for you too. We went for our first high rocks that we qualified for last year's Worlds. We went a 104 for the first time we ever did it. 105. We then went. We went 65 in um, NEC. No, we didn't. We went 104. Birmingham. 65. Did we? Yeah, we did. Okay, well. Well, there we go. Well, that's even better. Yeah. Okay, it's even better. So we went 65. And then for our first Worlds, which was pro, we went. 66 yeah so then we've just gone a 50 well it's like 57 59 so it's like 58 if you calculate it i'm like yeah a 101 i don't mm. think it'll be like a minute apart so we'll go like 59 minutes or anything because i think we are so much more well adapted and i think we kind of reached a very yeah. like top end threshold of what mm -hmm. we can actually our capabilities yeah, yeah. so i don't think we're going to suddenly be like we learn a lot between our first high rocks and our first world so that's why i think yeah, the gap 100%. is smaller whereas like i don't think we have those margins to kind of gain on this time round. but i do think that i think our running is going to be quicker so even if we're slower on the stations which we will be because it's heavier I think the time we make up running compared to Manchester should even it out that we are around that one one hour one. Yeah, mark, I think one hour two ish. I think you're right in respect to what you're saying there. Like when you first start and then even your first couple of events, you can make up a lot of time. But yeah. then when you get better, the yeah. marginal gains for a lot more effort. Like the it first takes... one I did with Zach was sixty minutes something. And the the latest one I just done with Billy was fifty three minutes. That's yeah. like seven. Obviously, Billy's a way better runner as well, so that's why that comes down. But you even look at someone like Hunter, who's committed a whole year of like his life to training to get like a minute or two off. Like I spoke to Hunter yesterday and texted him just saying like, "How does he feel?" And he messaged me yesterday saying, "I'm feeling like a fucking monster, the biggest and best build of my life." <laughs> Now it's time to unleash the fucking beast. I'm scared for how quick he will go. I'm so I think excited he'll do... to watch him on Friday. It's Friday night, isn't it? We're going to yeah. get to watch. I think he'll do something pretty amazing, to be fair. But say, like, just going back to like what we were saying about margins, that is every single sport. Like, yeah, why yeah. why do world records not get bro broken every single mm. time that they're raced? It's because yeah, it's... It, the, the margins that people have to become better and the amount of effort that goes into the build-up of that training for that particular race, it's... Why is it like that? Yeah. It, it's yeah. normal I think when we're you get more, to that top level. I think we're seeing more broken high rocks is because like over the last year or so is because the sport is still so new and people are getting way better at it rather than other yeah. sports that have been around for, for years. But okay, Luke, what what's your predicted time? What do you think you and Meg will get at the weekend? I'll say the same. I'll say 61, 62. I th I, do you know why the reason I'm confident I think that you can get that is because me and Zach did 60 minutes 30 and all running paces some of the runs were five minute pace some of them were four forty five. like mm. some of the runs were slow and I mean, although some, like, of your, some of your stations were even a bit slow yeah, but, um, <laughs> like, i don't know if it was just no, the runs not that many stations that are slow to be fair <laughs> that's right obviously our stations will be quicker than yours because you're yeah. using the same way that yeah. we were. but the the pace that you can make up on the runs in mm. in comparative to what me and zach did like you could easy make make up that, that time, time back up so i think you could mm. have it in the locker just because we did that time reflecting yeah. on the runs, they were really slow in the race. Like no disrespect to us at the time or to Zach or whatever, but they just were. Yeah, they yeah. By by stations, I meant like we're quite good at burpees because we're light on our oh, yeah, feet. We're, we're ones, quite yeah. quick at burpees. Even like the ergs, we're like so. Yeah, you are six. You are you have got very strong on the ergs. I've recently. got very, recently. So like, it's the creatine. I was I honestly, Callie, honestly. Was scared. <laughs> Cali, honest, my I, eggs. I actually no joke put Manchester. Um, shout out March on and women's formula. Um, genuinely, I genuinely believe that um, the reason that I could hold on for dear life to Lucy <laughs> in Manchester was creatine. No joke. I think yeah. it was creatine. Very underestimated. But it, Very no, underestimated. But it, I think it is like I've, aside from my absolutely horrendous hip, which I'm just going to have to dose up painkillers to get through it on Sunday. It's, it's an hour of work. So what? But also we are, will cover it. the pace we're running at is for both of us. It's not yeah. just, so I think it'll be absolutely fine. Um, over the past like three weeks, since I have been taking creatine again, it's not even like, but I feel better. Like I feel so good. Like how are those Sunday high rock sessions been really going for on the stations? Yeah, I was slightly scared at watching you pull that ski on Sunday is all I'm going to say. And the rower. And I'm literally sat there thinking, well, not sat there, stood there. I'm stood there watching you thinking, Thank God you're my partner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. 
Thank God. But yeah. um yeah, I felt I felt pretty I, I am to be fair, I am really struggling to get out the yellow and the red at the minute. Since the marathon, I am red, yellow yeah. or red. Yellow I've had the odd day where I've been green, but then as soon as that green day happens, I'm back down into the yellow mm. and I think I really do need like these next few days of like taper and rest. Um but I felt really good in that Sunday class. My running felt strong and I woke up in the red. Do you, do you run together? Are you going to run together or is one of you going to run ahead? The only reason I ask is because, for example, I remember when Hunter and Sandy did it, he ran, one of them ran quite far ahead, pulling the other one. And when me and Bill do it, Bill runs like 20 yards ahead of me. And then what he does is he rests at the station and then goes hard at the start of the station because then I can rest then or are you going to run together? Run together because I set the pace. You're Luke. still setting the pace whether you run together or one runs ahead. It depends think, what you like doing. I think I prefer Lucy running with me and I can kind of communicate with her. Munchie's coming to say hi. I know, look at the little slug. Um, I prefer to kind of like communicate with Lucy to be like, push it yeah. or, or pull, pull, it, back. pull it back. Because the thing is, if Lucy's running ahead and she's going for it and I at that point can't actually catch her very well, she... she she could be reserving way more energy than she is putting out, mm. like running ahead of me. So if she's aware that pull it back, like you like pull it back. And then when you go into that station, cause you will start on it, you go for it and let give me my, like my recovery moment in a way. I think, I think we just do yeah. what we did in Manchester. We also communicate really well because we, before we're going into that last, that the end bit, we, we check if like I'm still okay to go first or if Meg's going to go first or shall I do more or should you do mm -hmm. more? We really, and we sometimes we do change the strategy yeah. a little bit. Um, I do a little bit more on the stations, but we we dis, we kind of discuss as we're going around, but because I've preserved a little bit, I can go harder on the stations yeah. for we some say, of it. And we, we just discuss, Lucy talks to me and I nod yeah. or yes. shake my head and say, see, yeah, no. Like, like, I, I only see Billy on the stations, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But, we look, but we also like doing it together. I no, think that's, it's... Fine. that's fine. Yeah. I, I think like uh, uh, that strategy for us just seemed to work mm. because he'd be 20 yards ahead, rest at the station. Then he's like fully rested and then flies at the station. Mm. And whilst he's flying it, I'm rested. So it actually worked quite well when we did it. And obviously, because yeah. like we got a 53 in Berlin, which is, I didn't mm. think we'd ever get at times it worked all right. But Real. everyone's different with what they do. I know Hunter and Sandy did it that way as well. But I thought you got penalties for doing it. Only no, you just can't start at the station. You don't get penalties for it. I thought you got penalties well, for it. I thought you got but, penalties for going through. But no, differently. But uh, what? What do you think you learned most from doing your first marathon? What did I learn the most? Um, or like, what would be the th if someone's going to do the first one? What like the learnings that you took? What would be three? Can be simple things. Can be complex things. Can be anything that you learned. Can I have a water back, please? This always happens. <laughs> actually, knob him a water off. I know. I didn't have enough time to start the podcast because I was so rushed. <laughs> I think I had a special guest that I couldn't even get myself a glass of water. Thirsty. And the and the special guest hasn't got a glass of water. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah special guest. I'm joking. I actually don't need one. Please don't. I'm joking. So we've got okay. some bottles there. I'm actually joking. I don't need one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the question? Three things I've taken away from that the marathon. You could give to other people who are Not listening three, today. Not three, just one. Oh, just one. I've said um, three, but oh three. Fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um going into a marathon. Um It can first, be the training or the event, whichever you want. It can be nutrition, training, whatever. First oh well, yeah, to be fair. Oh yeah, okay. So first thing I would say is that don't neglect the training. Like really give it everything you've got. Um get a coach. Get someone that is more qualified than you to take, just genuinely just take the, that responsibility and that stress away from yourself. Like I am so thankful that I didn't have to wake up for 12 weeks and plan my own sessions or worry about mm -hmm. my own running sessions. That was the responsibility of someone else. And all I had to make sure I did that day was get Fair out enough. and do it. Um. So yeah, get a coach. Don't neglect your training and just, but whilst I'm also saying that is something that if I go into my next marathon, which I think is so important, I will also be a little bit kinder to myself. Mm. Like I really stressed my first marathon and the training. And like, I remember, I just like, I remember like even messaging you two sometimes and being like, 
I'm so tired and I've got this run to do. I remember I got, I'd been at Lucy's London Marathon mm -hmm. all day and I still had an 18K interval run to go and do that That's night. A lot of movement, and yeah. I'd been obviously finding Lucy in London, got on the train back to Manchester. And I remember like really getting worked up and stressed about the fact that I hadn't done this run and I still went out on this run. It was probably about seven or eight at night. Jake, bless him, is on his bike next to me because he could see that I was in like a world yeah. of pain. I didn't even finish it. I think I just did about 10K. Boyfriend and brownie then I, points. And then, yeah, I know. And then rode a bike home like with him. And I think I would just like, in hindsight, I just shouldn't have gone and done that. Do you think if you hadn't all. been that hard on yourself though, that you would have got the result that you got on the day? Um... Good question. I think, yeah, I think I would have done. And I think I would have saved myself quite a lot of like mental stress potentially, because I know me, if, you, if you're the type of person as well, that kind of needs to be really locked in to all your training. Like I, I, oh, what was I going to say? I know that whether or not I give myself a hard time or not, when I do turn up, I do turn up for myself. So even if I had missed a few sessions here and there, and if I had avoided the beating myself up about missing those sessions, I still would have got everything I needed to get mm. done to still perform at that level. I think it was just more so about, yeah, being a little bit kinder to myself when I maybe needed it mm. and taking away that pressure. Um, you also put quite a lot of pressure on yourself at the time. I did. I did. That made you feel quite That's stressed. That's a very fast time for a first marathon. I like very, yeah. very fast time. But I think <laughs> it's because we were all doing it. It was I hard. Know. Do you know what it's, again, we're, sorry, we're going really off topic, off topic, but so many people are doing marathons now that again, I don't want to just blend in with like the crowd. Like I knew that I wanted to be impressive still in some way. So it was like, well, if I go any slower than a 3.30, like what is the point? Like mm. I, I'm, I don't see myself as a person that should get an average time. So it had to be above average, if that makes sense. Well, if you're not, if you're not putting an average effort, then you're always going to get better, yeah. aren't you? So that's just yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a testament to yourself. But I think what you're talking about there as well is, it's the difference between being Goggins mode and just being like hard, hard, hard all the time. Mm -hmm. Where sometimes it's about training smarter, not, yeah. not harder. Yeah, I think I think exactly that. And then also just I I think I like can mentally get in my head sometimes and not be very kind to myself about certain things. So it's like, and I know I perform better when I am more relaxed and I am more in tune with like my own mental. So yeah, I probably could have just benefited a little bit more from that. I don't that. know if you've got the capacity to do it, Carl, but there's a study on uh, basically the positive mental attitude going into a training session. Mm -hmm. So they did, a, I think there's a longitudinal study on this and it's based on, again, people's mood going into sessions and the change in performance indicators and the difference between that when you're going with a bad mood and a good mood. Yeah. And there actually is a huge difference when I you're can positive believe going into training sessions because you just ready to attack it, you'll push yourself further. Like, like yeah. there is a big thing about being not just motivated, but actually being in a good mood. So mm. doing things before you go into a training session that are going to change your perspective on the session is going to change your performance for the day as well, which again, kind of reflecting on that, I think it's probably sometimes people think of it as like hippy dippy shit of like treating yourself better. But if you do oh, that, it's a real thing. then you're going to yeah. end up with a better performance as well. 100%. It's also why the weather plays such a big impact on it. 100%. Like we were all out at the start of the that year. That is the other thing. I will never do a marathon in like an early time of year. Just train through summer. Yeah. yeah. Do the October ones where you can train yeah. through summer. Why did we, why were we all training in the rain? Yeah. In the winter. London's always, you have to train in the rain. Yeah. London, yeah. yeah. London, London was nice. So to be fair this year, actually, we no, actually got really good weather. Be in the rain. Yeah, train for it was horrible. But, um, mm. which I didn't really train for it, but, um, didn't the, train for my 305 marathon. Yeah. Well, I did just, the speed just, project. Just gonna so we'll class that as my that training. Um, I think the weather, like when we were all in Lanzarote in February, God, we had some good sessions. The sun was shining. That was the start of my, that was the start the of your marathon week. block. Yeah, my marathon God, block. Yeah. So that and was that like, was nice. I really started on a high. Yeah. And then. But I think that's valid yeah. to kind of stay on the podcast. Like you won't be massively motivated every single day, especially when it's pissing mm -hmm. down, it's chucking down. You actually sometimes our village flooded the other day and we had, I had to like 
drive to the gym just to do like a 5k run because every element of the, the roads were cut off and we couldn't get through. So it's stuff like that. It's like, oh, well, that doesn't feel that motivating. But as if you're so consistent, like you were drilled in, you did some horrible, the one you did here when it was really was rainy, hard, yeah. wet, oh. miserable. You had 32 and I think I had 26, well, so I'd I I left you. I got home, got a shower, and walked the shop and Meg was running yeah. back to the village. <laughs> and that's that really hard. Day, I, think. I think that's allowed to be like, you know what, you will have some yeah. really tough sessions and it's yeah. to be aware that that's why, why they're going to the be hard. Race in the world. Our mm. is well, I think, a hard to race. But it's, yeah. yeah. Running wise. Yeah, it's very, very, very difficult. I think... Um, yeah. So the, the, I think the other thing to contend with, and you, I mean, obviously, Lucy, you're not so lucky with it at the moment, but if you can go through a marathon block with no injuries, you're very oh. lucky. I can't remember what the stat is. I think it's like 79% of people who do marathon training get injured. Yeah. So that's a big thing to, to I think with having a coach, you have the correct volume for your week. A hundred percent. And mm. yeah, it was, because I only got really one niggle and shin. it was, yeah, my, well, no, it was my soleus, which I thought was my shin. Um, and I think I took actually. Wait, why was that injury? It was just like it was just like for like overstraining in my soleus. So front. your soleus is like the bottom part of your calf that is almost like attaching to the front of your shin. So I went to the, I went to Dave the physio thinking that I had shin splints, but then he corrected me corrected me when I was there and said, everyone comes in thinking they've got shin splints, but it's actually really hard to get shin splints because it's obviously like a cracking in the bone. So unless you've had like real impact, it's probably not shin well, splints. That's, that's, well, the, the crack in the stress fracture, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shin, and shin usually splints. sprinters will get shin splints because it's like power. Whereas if you're training for something like a marathon where you're doing a lot more easy runs and like even your intervals aren't like god like high knees yeah. sprinting then it yeah more likely not saying every single time you can get shin splints from marathon training but more often than not it's a calf issue or a lot a soleus issue so mine was just on my long runs basically the fatigue because i wasn't used to running that volume um and increasing it to that level that it just when i was getting towards the end of my easy runs I was just like overstraining and yeah. over tearing. So every single step was like, ow, like shooting pains. I thought up my shin, but it was actually like up through my soleus and all the way there. And all I had to do was take like a full week off. And thankfully I gave myself enough time. I think I did a 14 week training block. So I had about two weeks to play with. So yeah. even if I took a full week off running, I had the time to kind of mentally be like, okay, but I can still get the volume done. Mm -hmm. Um, a, yeah, a full week off and then just had to build back up to that like running pace. And don't get me wrong. I don't think from when I first started feeling that, I don't think I did a run without feeling it. I would mm. was taking like ibuprofen and it, some runs were good. Some runs, it was really bad, but it was, I remember you said to me one day that you don't think you ran without pain for about two years. And that's all I kept thinking <laughs> in my head. <laughs> so I just thought, right, well, that's the way it is then. And that you've got to get through to the end of it. But weirdly again after taper and on the marathon i didn't feel it once yeah, yeah I it's think like the it adrenaline just needed, it just needed the rest and need, yeah probably adrenaline masking it but um just on that as well the running with no pain it's actually i think when you do some kind of niggles, honestly when you do something. as much as we do there's like so my hip at the moment is so flared up and it hurts when i walk let alone run um it's a little bit worse than usual but usually if i go on a run i've either got doms from a session or high rocks or my upper back sore or there's like a little bit it never ends. of something <laughs> i think do you know what i mean it's just it is so what that, it is that injury that meg's got or hard that's what i've got at the moment that's what yeah. Yeah. i've got a microterma soleus at the front which is why yeah. i feel it's like a shin that's it's not horrible. the shin though well i'm getting an x-ray next week just to double check it's yeah. not but it's uh it's shit just whilst running as well i this was a, a, an idea that i put out there before i think at some point next year, just as a bit of a, a fun thing, we should take the cameras and Cal and Kieran should do a doubles high rocks. <laughs> oh my God, How yes. Sick would that be? Hard pass. <laughs> you should. Absolutely not. And we'll you film should. Cal and Kieran, that would be I sick. would love. The content we'd get back would to not be that. ideal. No, the yeah, content like, would be rubbish. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. It'd just be cameras over here yeah. and then you yeah. guys just like, you should do that. In. Mm. <laughs> I think we should train them for it as well though that would be I don't know that might be cool I'd be game let's chat to Kieran let's see <laughs> <laughs> yeah. absolutely 
absolutely not. My Let's first put that memory. Else, yeah. My first memory of meeting Kieran was at that uh, my protein run event you did, and I don't think he realised that he had to like run yeah, to the camera, he and he wise. was sweating yeah, by fucked. the end of it, and was like, yeah. I was like, I don't think he knew what he signed up for, but that's yeah. my first memory of. of yeah, yeah. Like, Carl's, but you've been rowing a bit and doing a bike anyway, and you, you've done mm. a bit of running. Kieran has started running. <laughs> has he really? The fact that he has to keep up with people us on high rocks. <laughs> really? Like, he's like, I've started putting five k into the program because at every end of every high rock, I am fucked just from running around. After you. He was actually for Manchester. I remember with us because we were running quick at Manchester, and we he couldn't get from one end to the other. And he, he said he just get the camera and he go run, and then he's like <laughs> straight onto the next. No, the worst one was high, was the relay in Berlin. It was me. Billy, Jake Poor Dearden thing. and Jack. And he had to run to film <laughs> oh, the yeah, station. Yeah, yeah. And then because you tag in the pen, he had to run back to get the person to interview them who'd just been on that. He'd get back and he was just white, dripping in sweat. And it was two degrees outside, by the way. And he was just like, <laughs> oh, you can hear the background of a bit. Of Hard that though breathing, to like, like yeah, clock difficult. on and, yeah. and, and do it all. It was, yeah, that's um, tough Throw going. Throw more respect on these videographers' names. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. well what I done. say. Well, well done, Kieran. But Cal, you, to be fair, Cal gets the, the easier job because he's snapping. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I just sit there and yeah, yeah. just snap a Cal picture. Like the more the James Bond kind of all where yeah. just snap and go. I've done a five k with a camera before. That was a pretty horrendous yeah. five kilometers. But yeah, let's chat yeah. to Kieran. I'll be down. Yeah, that'd be I cool. Do that. That'd and be we do like a twelve week block train you both hard, yeah. and then shut him. Could be a it. series. See what he says. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. I'd be, I'd, I'd be interested. And well. it's nice to have a performance goal. Yeah. Right now, I'm very much training for aesthetics. So yeah, it'd be nice to have a performance next season. Let's do it. We spoke about. Lucy's annoyance in the 42k what was the best thing about doing a marathon with your sister um you make me cry again I cried on Saturday at our event didn't I emotional being is Lucy yeah um the best thing was um I don't oh my god my tummy's really rumbling sorry about that um the best thing yeah Bagel with banana and peanut butter, please. Mm. Um, the best thing was pr probably that I didn't have to mentally go into, I didn't have to go into my own head at all because I was sharing it with someone mm -hmm. mm. in a way. And I think like, and I think, I think anything we do together, like not even the marathon, just even sharing high rocks, it's, it's having that, Anyone that's got like a sibling, sister, brother, whatever it is, there is like this undeniable, like unsaid, like Com language yeah. that yeah. you can kind of like have together. Mm. And I think it's like, that is a real comfort to me in anything yeah. that we do, whether it be high rocks, whether it be that marathon. And it's almost like an underlying tone of, it doesn't matter, like everything's going to be okay. Like it doesn't matter if you hit a wall because Lucy's going to tell me it's okay. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if... Yeah, when you were obviously in a deep, dark place in Chester. Mm -hmm. And I think when I saw you and you started walking towards me, I thought, oh God, she is in a bad place. Yeah. And you were basically saying to me, she was like, I've let everyone down and all mm -hmm. this. I think, well, I, I can't say this, but I think me saying to you that like, you've let no one down, like no, yeah. none of us yeah, care, 100%. like what do you need? Like all that. It really like just, you don't have to worry. And I think it just, there's just like a lack of, everything is going to be okay because you've got, you, I've got Lucy by my side. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I didn't is. think about that common effect. Yeah. Like it's like when yeah. Lucy found me and I didn't even think about it from an event perspective. Yeah. I think it's well different. I think it's also really special. I think anyway, what we do is quite unique because we're doing it together and a lot of siblings do stuff together. Mm -hmm. We're almost doing it at like quite a high level. Like we used to swim together at a higher level, mm. like they're, they're not, do you know what I mean? It's actually like, like we got a British record together at High Rocks. Yeah. Like you did a sub 3.30 marathon together. Like it's almost stuff that's like really, really hard. So it feels mad to do it with a sibling. I think not many people in the world that have that. I think that's what I mean. Luxury chance opportunity. I think it's. Yeah. I, I think, it, I think it's very rare, very rare what we have. And also, it, it just makes me so, really but like to me like not in a it feels so natural to be performing at a high level with you to yeah. me because but you've done we've, as kids, so haven't it's because we've always done it like if anything i think it would feel it would feel more um bizarre to be underperforming mm. and not doing well when we are together because we i've never 
we've never not. Yeah. We've, we've always like, whether it be, yeah, like the swimming days, like there was never- Or like cross country. Anything. It was always us as sisters, like always coming in either one or two, or it was never, there was never many people between us to mm. take any more spots. And like swimming was a bit different because we both had, we didn't actually- we Didn't do the same races. We didn't compete in, our best events weren't the same events. We only crossed over in 400 IM. That was the only event that we yeah. kind of could go head to head at. Um, but we were both impressive in our favorable events when we did that. And we were always in relay teams together. So when we were swimming together, we, yeah, it was, it doesn't feel unnatural to be in that space. It feels. Do you remember the cross country race we did? Which, which one? So we, I think every high school did it where they all, ha all had cross country races. Yeah. Me and Meg oh, were on the yeah. cross country no, which team. You always like to bring this one up. Because I, I think it's not. I th but they, you wouldn't do this. For, I don't think you do it for a friend. I think it's more of a sibling thing. Yeah. That's more my point. Uh, you always did like cross country races. Me and Meg did cross country at high school. And we were really good at it. We used to do quite a lot of like fell running with dad and stuff. So we always used to come one and two with cross country. I said this other girl who, who, who was like a full on runner. This day... She faked in, she got up that hill, didn't she? She did fake Because we joke. overtook her. Because we run it, we ran it together. I love seeing people do that, you know. It's yeah, so, yeah so, and it was, people, it was a legit moment. It wasn't that you know, but you know. And she was, was like, like oh, mm. up this hill, and we thought, okay, we're, we're off. We were in different houses, and we got to come around to the last corner, got ahead of the hair or whatever they call it. And then Meg was just like, oh, you just let me win this one because I'm the older sister. And I was like, yeah, so I'm going. It wasn't because I was the older sister. I think I was year 11, you were year 10. So I was leaving. So I was yeah. like, it's yeah. the last one that yeah. I can yeah. win. And it was just like, a, so, it was like, yeah, absolutely. Like, just like, go. just go for it. Just go. Um, But yeah, so it's, it's almost. So with that as well, what do you think about, and there's, a, there's, we've had conversations about this recently about people not finishing hierarchies. Just before we move on to that, because that's a whole realm. No, we're not going over it loads. I just want to quick. Oh, um, for, for for what reason? So, for example, Hunter spoke in his video last week that I think he's only completed three hierarchies in the last three years. The other ones he's pulled out of because he hasn't been on time or he, like he did, he wasn't. And the reason why Do you he, mean like mid race? Yeah, pulled out right. not because of injuries, so just because they felt like they weren't going to get. He's not time. on time. And, but the reason why he said he finished this one was because obviously he bigged it up a lot and he wanted to go for the world record in Anaheim, and all his family had flown in to go and watch it. So he felt a duty to finish it. Mm -hmm. And I know quite a few people have pulled out of them because they weren't going to hit a time. Don't really agree with it. Cause I don't think it's the same as like any other sport. If you're in a swim race and you're doing shit, you're doing shit. If you're in, you if you're in a marathon finish. and you're doing shit, you're doing sh like you're having a bad day. And I think you learn more from those races by finishing, learning from it, seeing what went wrong I just don't, I don't think you should just be pulling out of every single race because then comes it too easy just to stop. Oh, Quitter. I'm not up to where I am on the road. I'm just going to stop. Yeah. Oh, just finish it. If you did shit, you did shit. You don't, like, you don't see like high performing athletes. I've never seen any really, of this Yeah. That's like what I mean. Like pulling out, like you don't, they're finishing that race and then they'll go in their interview after and be like, it wasn't my day. I wasn't on time. But that's what I, that's what I was saying about when you get, to the level where you are the best of the best and those margins become really minuscule. That is why world records aren't being broken because people mm. have bad days and good days. Yeah, yeah. Like that is the whole process of being an athlete. And like Lucy said, I do agree that it's, you will become a be better athlete in yourself by having those bad days. The bottom line is it's life. Not every day is a good day. Mm. And there's so many different variables to why you might not like, do your best that day. You can't do every single race and be like, PB. I PB'd. No, because, but you've just pulled out the last two. Yeah. So you've not done every single race as a PB. The last two you did not finish. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, you can't, where's the backlog of, where's the journey a bit? Where's yeah. the story? Where's the journey? Because like, that is also just as important as you as a whole, as an athlete, than just these PBs that you keep yeah. getting. I mean, I, I understand the concept of why people do it. Yeah, so, completely. Like they don't want to get injured and they don't want to sacrifice not doing it. I think that's the injury would be the one reason. Yeah, that's a different round. It's, it's, is it because of the injury or is it because of the hurt to the ego of, of mm. water not doing what you said you were going to do? 
But I also think it takes a bigger person to step over the finish line, having not done what you said you were going to do. I did it in London. Like uh, my goal, I told people 65, I finished five minutes and that's way longer. And I knew when I was like halfway around or three quarters way around, I wasn't going to do it. And there's a voice in the back of my head just going, oh, just like, just fuck wow. it off Ben. Or like, when, but there was a part in the YouTube video where I've got cramp so bad that I stopped for a minute and a half in London, just hung my head over the thing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, just, just plow, just plow. But then I was like, no, I just want to finish it. Even if I come through it a shit of time and it taught me, well more about myself than not finishing absolutely but you just got you've just got to be like you can't just be a princess all the time and pull mm-hmm. out when you yeah. don't like it like just suck yeah. it up like Throw, it's not your, your day toys out the pram don't teach yeah. You anything. yeah just, just get through it hey also you can't i don't think in any sport you should be pb in every single race because you're doing like something's mad going on yeah. there if you're pb in every single like say if you're a 10k runner and you pb on every single 10k it's impossible because you'll hit a point like mm-hmm. you just yeah i think it's a bit of um it's a crazy one. But I think social media is also playing quite a big part in it. People who are big on social media who don't I want to. I think that to... is the difference with high rocks. Yeah, it's quite big on socials. And people, mm. I don't know, they don't, I don't know, they said something and then they can't deal with it. I don't know, might be an element. Yeah, I think finish it. I think it's also like just, like there's other people doing it, like doing it for the first time. Some people are taking two hours to do it and they'll just struggle through probably and probably feels even harder for those people and they're still just slugging it through and finishing it yeah and they'll probably take mo- more motivation from you if you do the same and finish it yeah the point that i was just gonna make before it doesn't seem relevant now <laughs> <laughs> but i was just gonna make say anyway. i'm gonna make it relevant what's really <laughs> special for me and meg is mum and dad as in i think it gives me so much joy and pride when we do stuff together because it makes them so proud. Quite like, wild, isn't it? Yeah. Because but, cause I just mm. think that like some of the things we do together, I think they're so proud that like, they came to High Rocks, they were buzzing, they're coming to Nice. They're so excited. They were so sad they couldn't be in Geneva. Um, but they that they just they're really excited for us. And I think as daughters, to make your parents proud of something you can do together is even more special. If you're not doing it for your parents, who else are you doing yeah. it for? Yeah. I think they'll be really re- extra proud and excited because what happen- happens most of the time is is that parents will be, uh, one of the best parts of their life will be going to watch their kids play sport and achieve and do well. And that usually finishes at like 13, 14, 15. And that did finish for you too. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like it's been reignited again. Mm-hmm. And it's a super big luxury the fact that you two are now doing something again together and doing very well at it so it's like that thing that they had when you were younger <laughs> is now his element. back <laughs> there again yeah he is he's doing the Clive Lair he's fucking all yeah. he's loving it he is and it's it's like when they came to the, <laughs> the 100k and they were just so involved but, in that race yeah. like mapping it planning it logistic they, like they, they he are loves so it. in that world as well yeah like, it's yeah. different they have both of them also been brought up doing sport so competed yeah it's yeah it's within it's within everything we know and i genuinely believe like as a family we have some of our best memories that are surrounded by sporting events and stuff like i think yeah so you can you Mm. just continue that for as long as you possibly can because if we're not doing that what are we doing Mm. in a way and it's it's gonna get to a point and this is there's a doctor who talks about uh, he's a trainer and a coach for america and he talks about doing the things and the way he prioritizes life and training is all to do with the things that he can do now that he won't be able to do later. Yeah. Um, and he was doing some, some things in his training, like cycling and stuff as a 40 year old, which he stopped doing because he wanted to carry on running because he knew when it was 15, 16, he wouldn't be able to do it. So that's the way that he prioritizes training, which is actually quite, quite clever. Yeah. On that final question is off the back of like the, the Clive Lurch, because I think sometimes people think, I'm going to look stupid doing high rocks, which I think is the common denominator for some people. What is something that everyone looks stupid doing? In farmer's carry? No. In the world? In the world, not in high rocks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> farmer's but carry farmer's is... Carry true. Oh, what? Up there. Embarrassing. Like, yeah. Embarrassing. <laughs> if when you try to run with it, you actually do look a bit mad doing yeah. that. I think that's why yeah. I don't run... <laughs> something i think i've laughed at you sometimes and thought oh i think you laughed at me in manchester as <laughs> i went off and i was thinking i'm going really quick here yeah. so you better no, but it's just you better button that mouth yeah but no but in, you have to with high rock sorry with farms you have to, have to laugh at yourself yeah. yeah it's all right what's something in the whole world everyone looks stupid doing so it doesn't even matter of like i don't know um who, <laughs> I who, know. Plays, who plays james bond 
Daniel and Craig. Doesn't matter Daniel Craig or like the the, the most good looking person in the world. They look fucking stupid doing it. <laughs> so I think you know that, and this reminds me from the the retreat when Thomas did it, and I thought it's just a big ick. You know when people are warming up. <laughs> And then guys do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, that is isn't it. It's just that, whoever's it? doing it. We're all we're all pissing ourselves because we're thinking we look absolutely. <laughs> that. So I think that's me. Okay. That's that's yours. You do is the hip circle warm Can't up? Can't get thinking. Um, I could probably think of more. I've got one. I think it's one we discussed before. Go on. Nobody looks. It's not sexy. It's not great. Nobody looks good at crawling up the stairs. Oh, oh god. god! On all fours, that all is an egg. Yeah. Even if you're doing it, like it's I not wouldn't sexy. do it. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't yeah. try and be. That Except is... the cat, unless you're a cat who go on four legs. Yeah. But no yeah. humans. No, no humans. humans. Um, what would you look stupid doing? Uh, my mind's gone to a really weird place, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I'm and I don't know. Do you, I don't even know whether some people will know what these are. I feel like this will be a generational thing. Do you remember those? Like they were like um they were like squidgy and they had like a hole in the middle and they used to slip through your hands. <laughs> you used, Wait, yeah, you used to get them in chest and they, yeah, 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 and they used to have like they used to sometimes have glitter in them. <laughs> sometimes they were like had little oh, fish. Nice <laughs> 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 no, but it's very like penile. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> <what you laughs> like, no, well, that is even what I was thinking. It just looks everyone looks oh. everyone looks stupid with one of them in the hands because it's like, what are you doing? Yeah, doing this with it. But or, yeah, but it doesn't have to be. It could have been like any because they just slip out and like all yeah. those things. But my my head went there. But then I'm probably would like another answer, and I'm still thinking. But I those still think that they are stupid call. things. Uh, so when me and Andrea had been dating for like six months, seven months, I got the worst food poisoning of my life for like oh. three days in Thailand. It was like horrendous, and yeah, I've never been less attractive in my life. I was that very, very That's aware sickness. of it. Sickness. She saw me in like a very not attractive kind of. You no know, one can pull off being ill. Projectile vomiting. Uh, yeah, projectile vomiting. But because you what? actually feel poisoned, what was I don't doing you? The day, you went off stop doing that because making me feel sick. I mean, this happens quite regularly, to be fair. So it could have been remember. one of many things. I remember it got so bad in Thailand that I ha I said, I need to go and lie in the pool. And she like walked, me I, I floated in the pool and she like walked me around like I was a sick Victorian <laughs> child. It was very fun. Food poisoning is yeah. honestly is the worst. Any oh, time of, any time of. Like norovirus. Oh God. I don't when I had it here curled up and you two just thought, oh my God, you literally. You think you are going to die. That's, yeah, that is how I felt after High Rocks. I, it was like having food poisoning, but I wasn't. And yeah, no one looks Good with food poisoning. I was doing something the other day. I can't remember what it was, and you like stop it. It's making me sick. I don't probably. I, I don't know if I said those exact words. Probably said it's giving me the ick. No, it was a lot more extreme <laughs> than that. I can't remember. And it was one of those things that I had to do as well. So there was, like, was no getting out of it. It was a daily function that I needed to do. That's why it felt worse. I felt like hum humiliated. I don't know. I actually caught myself in the mirror the other day. I'd taken my jeans off and I just had like a t a long t-shirt on the top. Yeah, and I it made felt me fair. I can like the least fuckable person on yeah. the planet. It was horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when dudes have got like yeah. the bullies on as well, with oh, a pair of socks and a white oh, t-shirt. No. Oh, yeah, a, that's, that's not a look. That's not a look. I can't. I know. I know. I remember the moment we were sat in the office and I can't remember what it was. But whatever it was, you, I don't think you'll do it again. I probably won't, no, yeah. I probably mm. won't do anything ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks for joining us today, Meg, for the 200th Not So Fickable know, podcast episode. Guys. Thanks. Congrats. Yeah, we've got some uh, cool guests coming in the middle of the next month, which you can't say the names yes. of, yeah? Yeah, they'll be coming out. Ooh. Hello. They'll be coming out in July. First month of July. Cool. Very good. Same Make times. sure to share this episode and like it because it is the 200th episode. I think we've warranted a little mini round of applause from you guys for, you know, turning up for 200. Most about, I don't know how hours that would be. I'm sure there's probably some way I was finding out. Probably about 200 hours. It's about an hour an episode now. And we've Ooh. done like three hour episodes, haven't we? Have we? Oh yeah, true. Yeah. I'll get a total time for next episode. I think it must be touching close hours. to 300. But yeah, many, many hours poured in. Wow. So make sure to share it, like it, subscribe youtube Leave spotify reviews. yeah we do appreciate it as always but yeah happy 200th episode thanks for coming and the next app that we'll was be really up great on what went down at high rock so oh. Oh. scary fingers crossed 101 see 101. even if we didn't went didn't go 101 Ooh, I'm scared. <laughs> um 
we'll t- we won't pull out. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, yeah we'll just we will let you know about the that. experience. We will be finishing that race. Yeah, absolutely. And oh, we'll catch you in next week's episode. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.